Hello, my name is Astrid, I am Wattle and Wool, and welcome to the part of the internet where I talk about knitting and my life. Um, I don't really know what today is going to be, so I'm going to kind of just start off a little bit with life stuff just so I can kind of catch you up and let you know um, what's been happening, and then we're going to talk about what is currently on my needles or being worked on. I've decided to move finished objects to after the works in progress, just because I feel like that kind of makes sense. Like you work on it and then you finish it. Um, and then probably talk more about life stuff. To be honest, I'm one of those people. I tend to put it throughout the whole time anyway. Um, but I do have some acquisitions to show you as well. So hi. Uh, welcome. It's been like a month. Um, and so I'm out of practice of talking, obviously. <laughs> uh, I would like to first pay my respects and acknowledgements to the Indigenous people on the land on which I stand, the Wajak Noongar people, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Okay. <laughs> so I have been at work. I started work on technically Monday, um, but I was back in class on Wednesday. So I am a high school teacher. I teach social sciences. So I teach uh, history, geography, economics, and civics, like politics. Um, I love it. I absolutely love my job. It is so good. <laughs> um, I really like the structure. Like I really need the structure of every day. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I know where to be, what to do, how to do it. Like I like that <laughs> and it really works for me. Um, the past six weeks I've had school holidays and I really struggled like a lot more than I thought I would. I really don't like the lack of structure and I just need I need someone to tell me what to do. <laughs> um, I'm an adult, but I'm not an adult. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am back. I I have I kind of feel like I need to apologize for not filming, even though um I don't feel like it's a fault, which an apology would be a fault, but anyway, um I so I'm leaving at the end of this term I'm leaving in April to go to Europe and it's starting to become very real it is like we're in February that's like a, not very far away um so April 24 is where I'm planning to fly out and I'll be buying flights next pay so like this is crazy just it's absolutely wild to me that this stuff is happening um and so I kind of thought too hard <laughs> um I started, I did a, I did a end of 2022, what have I made, everything I've done, uh, post or like video. And that was super fun. Like I really enjoyed the video, but then I talked about my plans for 2023 and then I just think I thought too hard. Like, I don't know if you've ever done this. Uh, I do actually have anxiety. So, uh, like I have medication for it and it really, really helps. Um, but I just, so I don't know if it's connected to that or if this is just like a, an everyday human experience, but I basically overthought the concept of moving and just went, Oh my God, where am I going? What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I don't know anyone. I don't know anything. And just kind of, spun myself out just a touch um and so I then spent the next two weeks three weeks just having a bit of a mind melding moment so I got a bit of knitting done which was excellent uh but I didn't end up recording in January just because I honestly just got so overwhelmed that I just couldn't I just I just couldn't commit to anything so that's what's been going on. I am now back at work and I'm feeling back to myself. I am feeling like I'm in my element and it's been good. So I, yeah, I started back at work and I have, oh guys, I have some incredibly amazing classes and I love them. I am so excited. I've definitely got challenging, um, not challenging students, but like, challenging dynamics um I have a group of kids who I'm trying to think of like I have yeah I've got a group so one group of kids who are like super bonded to me and I'm pretty bonded to them I might have cried when I found out I was teaching them again this year because I love them so much um and so yeah I that was incredible and so for me a conscious moment is building resilience and building confidence in them that they can try 
but also knowing that I'm leaving and I want them to be able to be confident in trying with any teacher, not just trying with me. Um, and so, yeah, trying to build that resilience that way when the next teacher walks, next teacher walks in, they're like, oh yeah, you know, like, I know I can do good in house and it's not just, I know I can do good with Miss P. Like I want to, I want to build up their confidence a bit in house in general. So I'm trying to do that. Um, I have another group of kids and they are quite low literacy. Uh, and so they just struggle writing things down. Um, and so for me, my, my, you know, I really couldn't care less about academics. I really don't care. I know I probably shouldn't say that as a teacher, but I don't care. I really want my kids to be successful, amazing humans and to get a job and to be an amazing worker and to succeed in this. And so for me, it's not so much about, oh, can you get a C grade on a geography test? It's, can we find skills that are going to be necessary for when you, you know, become a worker, for when you are in the working environment? So this is things like, are you wearing correct uniform? Are you able to look at a scaled diagram and follow it? So that way when you're a plumber or an electrician or a carpenter or whatever, you can follow the schematic set for you things like that. So I definitely have um, some challenges in that class just because it's a reframe for the way that I often think. And then I also have quite a, um, a academic uh, class as well. So they're going to be, you know, the, the much higher ones. So again, it's a mix of like, how do we extend you? How do we get you up there? How do I make sure that I am stuffing your little brain full of knowledge um, and making my class accessible and fun while extending you, uh, but also not putting too much pressure because a lot of the time when we think about academics, we think about the pressure being you have to go to university. It's like, well, actually, no, you don't need to. You don't need to do anything. But if you're intelligent, let's harness that intelligence and let's put it in, in you know, if you're academically intelligent, I should make that really clear. I believe intelligence comes in so many different formats and you can be hella smart at school and hella not smart in other ways, um, which I feel like is me. I am really good book and paper, terrible hands-on. I am really good at knitting, terrible at art, things like that. Like I'm, everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses. So if you're the kind of kid who loves to book learn or if my subject works for you, sick, let's go for it. Let me, let me push you. Let me bring you up to this level. Like I really want that. But then how do I, how do I do it in a way that is affirming you or affirming the kid without being like, and this is what you can study at university. <laughs> like they're 13. You don't need to shove it into a direction. Anyway, <laughs> so that's my rant. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just kind of been where I'm at. So back at work, back dealing with my, I, I call them psychos because they are just crazy behavior but I love them so much and I just I'm so happy so um it's definitely hard like it catches me at times where I'm like I have to leave this like I, I know my place here and have to leave but then I also wonder would I be as happy because I was struggling last year a little a little bit not as much as has as I have before last year is probably the best year it's been in seven years of teaching uh but I was struggling a bit and I wondered if because I'm leaving, if I'm seeing everything with a beautiful, romantic, rosy glow, uh, whereas if I wasn't leaving, would it be a little bit more like, ugh, these kids won't sit still, you know? Like, um, yeah, so I think it's got a different perspective right now and I'm really enjoying it. I'm trying, I'm trying not to look too deeply into it and just enjoy it. Uh, so it's been, it's been quite lovely. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my life. <laughs> Um, let's talk about knitting now, shall we? It is 10 minutes in and we may as well talk about a knit. So one thing I didn't know how to do, um, is talk about everything I was knitting in January because I, I just don't know. I don't, like, I don't know how to show you. I don't know how to talk about it. I also, in the midst of my anxiety freak out, I didn't know how to articulate that I was in an anxiety freak out. Now I'm out of it. I think. Um, so now I can at least articulate it. Um, and so I've got quite a bit to kind of show you, but this is not everything I've started. This is not everything I've started to knit. This is just what I'm knitting on at the moment. Um, and this will change. So there'll be other things I'll be like, oh, I started this at the beginning of the year. I'm sorry, I'm not showing them all to you right now. There's just been a lot. <laughs> so um, what I, the first thing I did, which I can't even show you anyway, and it doesn't really matter, is a uh, submission to a magazine. 
which is super exciting. It, the magazine will come out in June or July, so I can't show you it until then, but I made a really cute matching set um, of beanie and gloves. However, my I'm a teacher, I can read was definitely questionable um, because I did not do that. <laughs> Instead, I was like, oh, I'm just going to assume I've already been accepted into the submission pool. So I made something, wrote the pattern and sent it instead of asking to be accepted. Luckily, luckily, the lady is amazing. The editor of the magazine is amazing. And she was like, yeah, we can work with you. She's like, just so you know, it's not actually how it goes. Next time you've got to do better. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. My apologies. So I'm hoping that this will be something uh, I can start to do. Um, I want to credit Oliphant Cat, uh, Katrina Walser, um, because she is actually the one who suggested it to me and she does a lot of magazine submissions. So she's really someone that I go to and that I see as like a lead in the Australian industry for this sort of thing. And so, yeah, I just wanted to um, shout her out and say thank you for inspiring me to do this. While I was working on that, I also started working on this. So you might recognize this yarn if you watched end of last year. I got this given as a Christmas present from my uh, one of my best friend's kids. The kids of one of my best friends, that makes more sense. Uh, and it is this beautiful green, blue, purple yarn. It's in a terrible pile right now, but it is stunning. And so I was thinking... What would I do with it that's going to make it really stand out? And I know, I know it's a big chunky yarn, but I wanted to do something summery with it, which kind of doesn't make any sense, but it did in my head. So I was thinking, what if I did a, like a corset style singlet? So I cast on the sleeves and I also wanted to make sure that they matched. So I cast on at the same time, like I, at the same point of both yarns. I think it's a row or two out, so it's not really... A big deal at all and I did double knitting so I did knit one slit one knit one slit one and then the other way slit one knit one slit one knit one so it ends up this really delightful stretchy firm ribbed fabric that is just really really nice but I made them too short because I freaked out and started increasing too soon so they are meant to be proper straps but they are too short so I don't know, I really don't like halter necks for me. It's not my thing. I actually, I have to admit, I don't know why I'm designing it this way. I don't even like strappy ones. I really don't. I like thick, thick um, vests or like singlets. Um, I don't, I, I actually prefer just tops. I prefer raglan to be perfectly honest. I am quite a busty female and I need underwear support, undergarments. And I hate bra straps showing. So I prefer a shirt. So you can't see the bra strap at all. That's that's what I prefer. So the if you can see, the sleeve is not long enough at all. But oh well. <laughs> then I continued um, increasing. I switched over to a rib. Uh, so you can see this only stretches to about here. And then all of a sudden this stretches all the way out. Uh, and it is in one by one rib. And then as I get down to the bottom of the cups um, on the bralette bit, if you can see... I changed, I started doing knits in the middle. So as I joined it, let me move that string away, that end. As I joined it, I really started um, having this like triangle part coming through because I really wanted it to be like the cups of a bra. Um, so it will be quite low cut, but I, I really like the look. I basically knit as long as I wanted to. There's no prescribed length. I could have done it shorter. I could have done it longer. As I was knitting it in the round, uh, the front of it is just stuck in it and the back of it is ribbed. So this helps it to be able to reach and stretch as I put it on. Uh, otherwise, there's no way I'd be able to put it on. In actual fact, it is a very wide, <laughs> wide one, um, but I think that is good. So then I was thinking, oh no, I've made it too wide, but this was actually intentional. So I picked up along the edge. Um, it's actually really hard to show what I did, but if you can see, this is the just stockinette flat, so just knit stitch. And then this side is the ribbed side. 
So literally along the last leg, the last knit stitch, if I show you on this side, because I haven't done it yet. Um, so there's the last pearl in there. Literally that knit row, the knit column, sorry, that I, um, is just before that row. I picked up all along that and I picked up both legs. So it wasn't just one, I picked up both just so it was double, like doubly as sturdy. And I made sure it was an odd uh, number and I did slit one, knit one, um, so double ribbing the whole way through. I did some yarn over, which you can barely tell. So I basically added up this little, this little placket bit. Uh, you can see it on this side, it doesn't look as good, but that is going to be the side that is facing inwards, so it doesn't really matter. But I've got some um, holy bits, so like in here, just like a little holy bit, kind of like a button idea. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to Spotlight, which is um, a Australian version of Michael's or Joanne, and like a big craft store. And I'm going to purchase some, what, do you call them rivets? Um, cl not clasps, the little metal circles that you like kind of hammer in um, and you snap them in together. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, so I'm going to go buy some of those. I will inform you what they're called when I do them. And I'm going to bang them in along here. So there should be, I think there's six, six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine. There we go. So there's nine uh, different uh, areas that I've made like a little hole to, to put them through. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and put them through. And then I'm going to find a beautiful blue. I'm thinking blue ribbon. That will be a nice, like, I want it like plush. So I want it like a velvety or um, like a really beautiful satin or something. If I can find a tie-dye ribbon, that would be even cooler, but I don't think I can. And I'm going to, uh, lace it up like a corset. So hopefully this can literally, the, the goal is that this will cinch in, um, that this will be, yeah, like quite a tight top. Um, and the reason I did these cups in the one by one rib is that they really, um, if I model, <laughs> they really stre can stretch over, but there, so there's like stretch, you know, there's like boobage can fit <laughs> uh, so that everything can fit and that they stretch out nice. So that way, if you want, um, the, uh, the stockinette bit, this bit here to lie nice and flat, this will stretch out, but it will kind of, I don't know. I'm hoping it'll work. Never tried this before. I haven't actually seen it done before, so I don't know. Um, this is very much like my practice run, but I really like how it is working out. I really enjoy this concept. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about that. That's what I've been doing. Um, we'll see how it goes. So far I've used up not quite two balls. So I only had two balls of this and it's not quite two with all of this left over. I would, I will need enough to knit the other placket on this side and then hopefully to knit a bit longer on the straps so that I can attach them to the back. Uh, so it should, it should be a two ball project and I'm a 44 inch bust. So fairly good, I reckon. Pretty good meterage. So that's that one. So 2023 may be the year of the blanket. Uh, I am hoping to do the year of the blanket. Uh, but if you do knit blankets, can you please tell me how? <laughs> And I don't mean like the mechanics of it. Like I understand you just kind of knit into the end of the row, you turn around and knit back. Totally understand that. Where? Where do you do it? Because I find that really hard. I, I think I need to get back in the groove of work. Like it's only been three days. So maybe that's part of it. Like that I'm not in my groove yet. So I need to actually be doing that. Um, but I'm just finding like my, my blanket projects, they're not just happening. <laughs> They need to happen. <laughs> so the first one, um, they are both advent blankets. The first one is one that I've talked about quite a bit. This is using the advent from um, Olivia and Oliver Fibers, the advent wanderer, wanderlust. 
uh, advent calendars from 2021 and 2022. So I put them all together in a colour fade, sort of, and I'm going to be taking one at a time and knitting it. I'm also holding it double with Daffodil Road uh, yarn in the colourway Almond, which is really beautiful and it's just such a delicately dyed yarn. I just love this. So I have finished the first colour and I have balled up for the second and I'm ready to cast it on. So I'm ready to join the second. And this is what it looks like so far. I am so in love. I think this is so beautiful. So it's just garter stitch for the base of the almond. And then this is like a pleated moment. So you cast it on and you knit, I think I did 12 rounds. Let me check. Ten. I did ten rounds. Uh, so I made sure that I had enough to be able to go up and down again. So that was my thing. I had to have, it had to be on an even round. I had to be up and down. Uh, and so yeah, so I did ten rounds, or ten rows, sorry, ten rows. And then on the tenth, I doubled it over and I used the uh, base almond biscotti colour to pick up and knit both the last leg of the uh almond that was left there. No, sorry. Using the almond colour, I picked up and knit the first row of the uh, advent colour and I knit together with the last row that was already on the needles of the advent colour. So I basically knit them both together. So, okay, sorry about that. Where were we up to? I think we were talking about the blanket. <laughs> um, Yes, so I have done the first pleat and I'm up to the second, but there's like 300 stitches on four millimeter needles and it's just taking a long time. <laughs> and I have 20, there's 24 days. So that's uh, 42 different colors, 41 because I used 40 now, because I've used one already and then I used one now. So 40 different colours I need to be able to put into this blanket. So there's quite a few in there and it's not exactly like a portable project. Like, I mean, it is right now, but it's not going to be. So yeah, I'm just kind of like, when do I have the chance to do this? Uh, and I, I do want to get it like on the move. So that, that worries me a little bit that I'm not really able to right now. My second blanket, I, again, think I already showed it to you at that time when I talked about the other one, but I don't remember what episode that was, so at some point I showed it to you, and that is my 2022 Advent using, again, Daffodil Road yarns uh, in the Almond colorway, and using the Advent from uh, Ash and Eve in the Steampunk uh, advent and these are the non-tweed bases. So I'm on the second colour and I have this much still to go so that's probably a bit more than half to be able to get it all in and I'm hoping to get this done at some point but again where do you find the time? Where do you get this done? I just I really want to get this done because this is actually a gift for my mum and I don't like the fact that I'm just being really ambitious and don't have a plan. I would like to have a plan um, but I don't really know when it's getting done. So that's kind of frustrating me a little bit. It's just not portable. It's not easy. Plus I've got extra, uh, balls for the edging pieces, which I'm really happy that I've got because I think it's perfect, but it just adds, you know, it adds to the complexity of being able to pick it up and take it around with me. So that's slightly annoying, that one there. But it will be beautiful when it's done. So I'm knitting it knowing that I love it. I just don't know where to knit it, you know? So those are the two blankets that I'm working on. They haven't been super worked on lately. Uh, I think the other problem is as well, I just don't, I don't feel like I work on it and notice a difference. Uh, especially like the other one is over 300 stitches. So I work, excuse me. So I work, you know, 
like half an hour or something and it's one row <laughs> like it's not like I'm knitting up something and I can calculate a, dis a distance so I think that makes it really um boring for me it's not it's not boring to knit it's just slow progress and I just like that yeah anyway if you have any blanket knitting mojo tips uh let me know please because I would love to hear them The third project that I'm working on is the cloud bow and it's going to be a dress. This is a beautiful dress. It's a top or a dress from the Pom Pom magazine and I'm using uh, Me as a Bird, which is this beautiful colour, and the Rosella, which is this colour. They are both dyed up by Wool and Works and they are in the Surrey Silk uh, colourway sorry um base this is currently the sleeve as you can see i've joined it oh i don't know if you can see but i have joined it in the round and so i'm knitting one absolute frustration of knitting on these uh chiaguri needles i love them don't get me wrong love 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 chiaguri they're pretty much my preferred but the cable is so much thinner than the needle tip so it really feels a bit like a battle just to be able to get the first few and the last few stitches on because i have the habit of pulling tight so that when i'm knitting in the round uh, everything stays the same tension. So I'm trying really hard to work on not pulling it too tight uh, to be able to keep consistent tension the whole way through. I think I'm getting better. Just looking at my stitches, it does look like I'm getting better at this, but it's still been a battle to remember, especially if I pick it up and just knit a couple of stitches and put it down like I do, like I try and knit this at work. Uh, and so if I, you know, as I, I get knitting, I maybe get half a round in and then I have to put it down. And my habit is just to pull a little bit tight, just to be able to make sure it doesn't slip off. And I think I need to stop doing that because it's weakening the stitches around, which means, um, so it's pulling them too tight, I should say. So it's really hard to pull them over the tips. But apart from that, I love it. I, so this has got a bit of a story. Uh, <laughs> I was teaching my year nine fives last year and Lord bless my nines, but they're crazy. These are the 14, 15 year olds and oh God, they're not academic at all, but they're also, um, they've been fairly disillusioned by school, I think is the best way to put it. And they don't believe that school has much to offer them. So sometimes they're there because their friends are there. Sometimes they're there because their parents make them be there. Sometimes they're there because they are not yet old enough to leave and get a job somewhere else. And so they don't want to listen and obey teachers' instructions. They want to have their own version of fun, which doesn't always correlate with my version of fun, which can be very annoying. So I one day was in a bit of a mood and I just needed to calm and settle myself before their class started because I was just it's not fair. I'm the adult in the room. It is not fair for me to take out my crap on my kids. And sometimes I do without realizing because I'm human and humans make mistakes. But when I know that I'm in a foul mood, I will usually try and deal with it myself and not bring it on to my kids. So this day I was like, Mah! just mm, moody and not really loving life. And so I was like, right, I know what's going to calm me down playing with wool. So I got out the Hank, and I started to wind it and I prefer to hand wind. I, I really like to hand wind my stuff. So I started to hand wind all my yarn and yeah, I, just, I really, it was like soothing. And some of my girls, they saw me doing it and they were like, miss, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just like winding yarn. And they're like, can we do that? It looks really cool. And this is Surrey silk. So it's incredibly light and fluffy and beautiful to touch. And I was like, yeah. Like if, if it'll help you, if, if you can calm down, if you don't annoy me, <laughs> if you don't break it, cause these are $34, um, then sure, absolutely. And they started doing it and they were like, miss, what are you going to make with it? And I was like, oh, I really want to make this particular dress. So I started showing them the dress and they were like, oh my God, yes, you have to do that. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll, I'll do that. And so this has become 
sort of like the dress that I feel like my kids and I have worked on together because they prepared all the yarn for me. So I was thinking about making it and I was like, you know what, I kind of want to make it at work. So all my spare moments at work, um, I do tend to knit during lunch times. When I'm saying spare moments, I don't mean in class and I don't mean um, a, a lot of the time before, after, during school, I am working, I am doing stuff, I'm calling parents, I'm prepping, I'm doing whatever I need to do. Uh, but uh, if I have spare moments, if I get to have a one-on-one -on -one with a kid uh, and, you know, I fidget. I want to be a nice parent, like nice person and pay attention, but I can't. I fidget. So if I need to, I will ask them if it's okay and I'll take up my knitting and I will knit while I'm listening to them and I'll get stuff done. So on the Monday, I was bored and was really struggling and I didn't get to knit and I was like, oh, this is really not working for me. So I think I came home that night and started knitting and by the Monday um, just watching what are mum and I watching We're watching designated survivor which is really cute so I got up to so this is the first one I made I think I don't know and I got up from here to like here and then I was like all right this is working this is this is working for me I like this so then the next day on Tuesday again it was a professional day we didn't have to deal with kids I finished off the pink and then started on this pink and I was like, all right, this is working. This is good. I like it. And then I joined, I think that night I joined for the, I picked up everything for the sleeve and started knitting the sleeve. And so now I am, yeah, up to the sleeve. And I've actually got on my phone screen, the picture of the model in the cloud bow dress, um, to show people when they're like, oh, what are you making? And I love this. Like, so this is going to be like the bodice bit. This is the sleeve. So it's going to go like here. I've got plenty of this colorway, so I'm going to do it as the cuffs and the neckline. This is going to be the sleeves and the body. I'm going to do a big peplum. I really want a big puffy moment. It's sturdy silk. I want it to be puff. I want it to be flowy. I want it to be light and airy and magical. And then there's an extra ruffle at the bottom of the dress. And I'm wondering if I have enough, I will be probably putting this as the ruffle on the dress, just at the bottom as like a cute little decorative hem. And I just think that'll be beautiful. So this is currently uh, one of my favorite projects and it really feels like it is the project for school. It's the project for my kids. I also had some of my uh, last year's year eights, this year's year nines also wind up some of this. So it feels like it really is uh, shared by some of my favorite classes. And yeah, so I can't wait to make it. I have nine weeks <laughs> to get it finished and at the moment I am storing it in this tiny little bag uh, because it really does fold down so small uh, and then it puffs out again which I love. So yeah it's been absolutely delightful just to carry this around and people see me walking around with it underneath my arm and they're like hey you've got your knitting. <laughs> uh, on Friday I went to uh, have some drinks with some people after work and Someone was like, oh, good, you've got your knitting. Uh, I was worried there for a second. He was like two minutes and you hadn't started knitting and I, w I was going to ask if you're okay. And I was like, yes, this is the reputation that I want. <laughs> so that was really cool. So those are the three things that I am most working on. This one kind of during the day and the blankets at night-ish, if I'm not asleep. Because <laughs> I was asleep by 7 o'clock last night and... I've already had a nap today because <laughs> I'm going out tonight and I don't know how it'll go. These three are finished. Uh, so this is the Eucalyptus Trio. This one is Eucalyptus Bud and it has little bubbles uh, along the base of this. This one is Eucalyptus Leaf and it has a little leaf design if you can see in there. And this one is the hardest to show of course. It is Eucalyptus Blossom and I actually think it's come out really well. I was doubting it while I was knitting it but I love it now that it's worked out. Um, and it's got these blossomy, what do you call them? squiggles, tugs, whatever, uh, both at the top of the neck and at the back as well. 
Because of the yarn, it blocks a bit funny. So it does get this line in here where the beginning of the round was, um, which can be a little bit annoying. It does block out. I haven't properly blocked this one because I finished it literally the night before the photo shoot. One of the reasons I wasn't enjoying the knit so much, um, these are Nubu in the pink and the gray. And this is 100% Lyocell, which is, um, I think it's bamboo fabric. And this one is, okay, so it's not bamboo fabric. This one is Trubu, which is 100% rayon from bamboo. So this is bamboo fabric. This is something else, but similar. So they're both plant fabrics. And I really love them. I love the drape. I love the shine. I love the movement of them. I love the feel of them. They feel so nice. So when they're, when they're all knit up, they are heavy. They're not light, I have to admit, but they feel breathable. So just that movement, they're a little bit crinkled, but that's probably more because I haven't, I have stitch markers in here. Uh, it's because I haven't actually, um, folded them properly and stored them properly. I have just been on the floor <laughs> because I look after things like an appropriate human. Sarcasm. Uh, so the drape of this, the squish factor, the brioche level is stunning. Like all of this is absolutely perfect and I couldn't have asked for a better fabric. I absolutely adore it. I'm so happy with my make. I'm so, so, so happy. This one actually came out a little bit short. If you saw my Instagram stories, I was like, ah, photo shoot is tomorrow and I don't know how much I'm going to get done because I was racing against the clock. I did manage to get it finished. It is very cropped though. So I probably should go back and add on at least another inch or two to the actual body before doing the bind off. Sorry, before doing the rib and then the bind off because it is short. Um, so I love the finished product. However, the making of the product, I hated, I hated, hated, hated it. I don't know whether um, it's because it's summer and my hands dry out a lot more in summer, um, but I was using a bunch of different hand creams and nothing was working. Um, I don't know if it's contact dermatitis because of the way that I hold the yarn. I don't know if it's because it's the middle of summer and it's really stinking hot and my hands were sweating. Um, but I found that I was getting little blisters all over my fingers and you can't really see it as much now, but I'm going to show you a close up. If you've got that like fear of fingers or fear of like dead skin or whatever, please look away for the next 10 seconds, but I'm going to show you my fingers. So there's like, you can kind of see where the dry skin is. And again, for the thumbs, you can see all the dry skin and it's, hello. <laughs> and it's just like blistering. It's, it was so uncomfortable. It was so annoying. It also would catch on the, on the, on the yarn. And sorry, a bit of dust and dirt on there. Um, but if you can see on the actual strand, sorry, if you can see in the actual strand, it is in multiple strands, like it's multiple plies. And so if one of them catches and pulls, it's so annoying. And so they would catch and pull on my like dead skin nails and hands. Oh, it was so frustrating. I actually, I pretty much didn't knit for about three or four days after making these because I was so sore. My fingers were physically so sore and it actually felt painful to touch and the blisters had to like heal just because of the fabric. So in no way, in no way am I saying don't make these. In no way am I saying don't use the fabric because I think this yarn makes incredible fabric. I am saying don't give yourself a deadline of the next day to get them done because it turns out that's not actually a productive thing to do um, and take your time with these. So enjoy them for the knitting process, not for the knitting product, I think is the really, the big skill I came away with. When I go back and add on extra with the pink, I really will be enjoying it for the knitting process because I really like the feeling of knitting with it. I just didn't like the feeling of having to be rushed to knit it, if that makes sense. 
Uh, these will be coming out in a proper video of their own. I'm, I had a photo shoot with the lovely Laura and it was absolutely amazing. Photos will be coming very soon. Um, I do need to write these up properly and grade them up and everything. So that will be happening. Uh, but I, yeah, just kind of need to get settled into work first before I can add on that to my plate. Plus uni that I haven't even logged onto. So that is a big deal for me that I need to get done. So I will get there. Um, just give me a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is my finished objects, my three finished objects for 2023. Realistically, only two of them are done in 2023, but you know, there you go. Okay, we've come to some acquisitions. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you for the acquisitions, which I just think is so amazingly cool, is the new thing that Australia Post has done. So it says to the name, and then it also says to the indigenous country. So if you know what land you're on or what land you're going to, you can put the traditional name place on the post and it's, it, it sends it there, which is so cool. So like, well done, Australia Post. Well done. So this is from my lovely friend, Maddie of Mad About You. She is on Gubby Gubby Country. And when I saw this, I was so excited. So I just, yeah, it made me squeal a bit. Mom was like, what? Why are you so excited about like a parcel? And I was like, look at what's on it. She's like, your address? Like, no, different. So it was really cool. So I know that these are going to be the socks that I sent off to be wound. And let's have a look. So she's put them in a lovely Ziploc bag, which is nicer than how I sent them to her. So thank you, Maddie. So when Maddie sends the uh, sock blanks, they have the waist yarn on the top, uh, which is what you can take off. And so it just makes it really easy to be able to open them. Now, confession time. Uh, I have not actually made any socks with the last ones that she sent me. And part of that was the car stolen drama with the needles being in the car. And then I had to buy new needles. And then I realized that the like spare yarn was in the car and just this whole stuff. So hopefully these are going to set my mojo back on. Um, cause I really wanted socks to be in my car knitting. I really, yeah, just to come with me in my car. So I've got this one, I believe was the Mr. Mr. Rogers, is it? For the Peter Rabbit colorway um, by Lovely Little Yarns. And this was in the, P the Peter Rabbit Christmas morning box. So I believe that's what this was. This one here is Olivia and Oliver um, in the 2022 advent. So this one was Marrakech. And this is the colorway for the socks. Then this is the 2021 colorway. And what are you called actually? French Riviera. And that is what they look like. I am so excited to wear these. I think they are stunning. Then we had two more. This was the Steampunk 2022 Advent Colorway by Ash and Eve Designs. And that is what, oops, sorry. It's like the Steampunk Rainbow. Is it called? Is that what it was called? Steampunk Smattering. And this one is from Wool and Works. And this is her Disney Nights colorway, that really pretty blue. So these are the five socks that I have got and I'm going to put them over there, which you can't even see, uh, with my other sock blanks so I can get started on these. But I'm really excited. I've got five new pairs of socks, which will probably become 10 because I prefer shorties. So I've got plenty of socks to keep me busy. I really do actually enjoy the heels, toes and cuffs of socks. And I'm really glad that I figured this one out. <laughs> really glad. So I have Maddie's business card. <laughs> I did send uh, Maddie some chocolate and she said they were unnecessary, but a lovely treat. 
I know they're unnecessary, Maddie. That's why you send them. They're an extra for you. And she sent me some tea. So I've got fresh start. And it says citron. So lemon. Lemon and fennel. Ooh. Three ginger. And revitalize, which is cinnamon, cardamom, and ginger. So that'll be really nice and warm. Maybe I should actually drink some of that because my voice is going because it's been the first week back at work. So thank you so much, Maddie, for getting my socks done. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sorry for never sending them in cakes like you actually should. Uh, I always send them in skeins and then message sending them to you saying, oh my God, I forgot them again. So please forgive me. <laughs> but these are these. Okay, I have two more acquisitions. The first one is from Etsy and sometimes I see yarn on Etsy and I don't believe it. Like I'm like really questioning and doubtful of it. I have had some beautiful Etsy shops and I've had some interesting Etsy shops. And so when I saw this one, I was like, you know what? Like it's not that expensive in exchange rates. So let's just give it a go and see what it turns out to be. So I haven't actually opened it except to just double check what was inside it. So I've just opened that front bit. That's it. So let's have a look at what is inside. This says noose concept and it has a camel and a bison. Yak. My apologies. A yak. So it says noose. Mongolian word for wool since 2017. Also the name of a family run business. Oyuna crochets, sews, and knits in the machines in Mongolia. Monko takes care of everything else. 100% natural and ethical. Yak and camel wool are obtained in Mongolia every spring after a long winter by combing. This method is very gentle compared to shearing and does not harm the animal at all. Most of our products contain 100% wool. We do not dye, bleach, or blend. Uh, yarns from Arkhangul and camels from Gobi live in extreme conditions like negative 35 degrees Celsius and have extremely warm wool, which has a very, a much lo longer fiber than for example, Merino. They will have a very fine and soft coat. Anything made from this premium wool will keep you warm and dry just as the wool itself will keep the Mongolian yaks or camels themselves comfortable. Breathable, fast drying, comfortable even when worn for a long time. And they are saying don't wash or wash as least as possible, which makes sense. So I have got a couple of different things. I have got this lovely gray and it says made in Mongolia, but it's shipped from Czechoslovakia. Interesting. So it's made in Mongolia, shipped from Czechoslovakia. I don't know how that works, but it does. And this is, um, it says organic, 100% organic wool and then yak because the camel one is crossed out. So I'm assuming it's the yak one and it is 90 grams and 357 meters and it's fingering. It doesn't feel very soft. It feels quite rustic. Um, but I think it would be nice. Like it's, it doesn't feel super soft, but it doesn't feel like prickly either. It just, it, it feels like natural wool. I then have this one in a lighter beige and this one has the yuck crossed out. So I'm assuming it's the camel and it is 90 grams, 350 meters. And this one is also the yuck crossed out and it says camel. And this is 90 grams, 350 meters. So all three together, I have a thousand and fifty meters, which should be enough to do something interesting with. I don't know what yet, but I'm getting ideas in my brain. So I will see how this goes. I really love the neutrals. I think a color work with these three would be ideal. Uh, and so, yeah, I'd love to see how, how we can make this work. I'd love to, uh, yeah, my brain is ticking over already. Maybe I even need to just order another one of these. Um, 
and then do these as the color way and this as like the main color. I might do that. So these are from Noose Concept in Mongolia. The last product is one that I'm sure a lot of people have bought and I jumped for this when I saw it. Now, I do want to say that this is a very expensive, expensive product and it was one that I really had to think about purchasing so it wasn't a, a quick or a rushed uh, decision. And in actual fact, I consulted several friends and they all told me that I should um, and they were kind of like, it's okay, like you'll be okay buying this because I knew that this was really expensive and I knew that it's something that I would really want, but something that I also would almost never buy myself. So there was like a lot of questions going into this. But it is the Kiviet uh, Purchase by Petite Knitter. So the Petite Knitter... Uh, the Petite Knitter did a, um, like a collaboration with Kiviet Yarns and so it is Luxury Arctic Fibre from Muskox, Arctic Fox and Arctic Hair. And this was like a collaboration that was announced on Instagram and was on a website and when I say I ran to go buy this, I mean I ran. I was so excited. Um... And so, yeah, so uh, let me unpack it with you. So it's come in this gold, that's what all the crinkles are, <laughs> uh, in this gold tissue paper. And we've got uh, the NQ, so none of it, Kiviet. Um, it's, hang on, what? Thank you for purchasing an heirloom quality item from none of it, Kiviet. NQ is located in Kugluktuk, uh, Nunavut, north of the Arctic Circle in Canada. Okay, oh, Arctic Circle, sorry. I thought I meant Arctic, like, the pole, and I was like, how do you get more north than north? But Arctic Circle, so that means that you've got the Arctic Circle and the north, and this is somewhere in the middle. Okay, wow, that must be very cold. <laughs> Kiviet is the fine underfur of muskox, extremely rare. It is warmer than wool and softer than cashmere. Pure cuvier will not shrink, is easy to care for, and is feather light. NQ also creates luxury yarn from Arctic Fox and Arctic Hair. So this is something that I've wanted to knit with since I started knitting. I have always wanted to play with luxury yarns. Always, always, always. So as you can see, I now have Yak and Camel. I have Surrey Silk. I also have 100% uh, Surrey um, Alpaca in here. I have some other amazing uh, like quality luxury yarns and I love them. I, I just am so excited that I can play with these and it, it makes me very excited. I don't like acrylic. I know I'm a yarn snob, but I'm also in a position where I'm able to make these choices. I am single. I only spend on myself and I spend a lot of myself, but still I, you know, I can do these things. So while I know I'm super privileged, I'm also counting my blessings that I can be this privileged. So I know this comes off as like, oh my God, I'm so lucky, but I really, I really know that I am. Okay, so we've got a couple of extra things, but I'll show you the yarn first, because that's the whole point. So we have, um, cute. Um, sorry, uh, we have two. So we've got the white and the dark. I don't really smell like anything, to be honest. I just have a catch in my nail and this is really bothering me because this is going to catch on all my knitting and I need to get rid of that. Uh, yeah, so this is the white and the grey. I don't remember if they were different components, but I think they're not. I think they are the same. Uh, I have a little thank you note from the Petite Knitter. And she even wrote my name. So on there it says, Astrid, thank you for your support on this special kit. Happy knitting from Wei Chen. 
And I can't believe that I have a handwritten note from the petite knitter herself that has my name. <laughs> like, how freaking cool is that? That is going on like, I'm going to keep this forever. <laughs> I know, I know it's a little thing, but oh my God. Uh, so that makes me super excited. So these are the two yarns. We also have... Uh, anyone to Zane. So the Do Labrador. Labrador tea. I don't know what that would be. This one is Herbal Tea. Arctic Blend. And this one is Crowberry. 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 Um, yeah. So they're different teas. They don't say what's in them, but I'm excited for, to try different teas. I always like trying different things. I also have some hard lollies. They're like rock candy style lollies. And they are in a maple leaf shape. So I'm going to assume that these are maple flavored, but I don't actually know. I'll try one in a second. They are maple flavored. Yum. Yum. They're sort of like cough lollies, but they're good. Yum. And while well, I've got a lolly in my mouth, I'm so sorry for talking. We also have these stitch markers. And I believe these are hand carved. They're little, little shapes. So I think these two are going to be a hat, some sort of color hat. I'm so sorry for talking with Lolly. These two are going to be some sort of colorway hat. Um, I actually have a couple of Latvian designs I really need to um, get into. Actually, while I've got you, while I have got you, I talked before, I talked before about one of my best friends being pregnant and I have got these two colors. So this is West Yorkshire Spinners Exquisite. 80% Falkland wool, 20% mulberry silk. This is in the colorway Dusk, and this is in the colorway Chantilly. And I think these two are gonna go absolutely beautiful together. I am in the process of looking for some Latvian designs that talk about protection, hopefully motherhood, that sort of thing. And it's going to be um, a colorwork beanie for my best friend and I want to make a little version for her son as well so that way they can wear matching beanies because he's going to be born around June and knowing my friends he's going to be a healthy healthy baby and a healthy size so um hey they keep posting regularly that he's on track and that he's in a really nice healthy weight um and yeah I just I'm so excited for little baby to come out. I won't actually be in Australia when this happens, but at least he can be cozied up with one of my makes or several of my makes. So this is something that will be made for him. Um, and so I'm starting to look at designs. So while I'm looking for these designs, I'm also going to be looking for these designs in a Latvian one. When I actually bought these, I did try and go for a more natural brown, but this is the only one that I could get at the time. So it is very dark, but I think it'll be beautiful. So these are going to be two colorway beanies. Hopefully by the next time I podcast, you will see some progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, having a chat, hopefully telling me about your blanket mojo because Lord help knows I need some help. Um, and I will see you hopefully much sooner than in over a month. I've got yarn coming at me, so obviously I need to get knitting. I will see you very soon. And I'm really sorry if this was low energy. I've already had a nap today. <laughs> I am tired from teaching, but I love it. I'm so happy to be back in my element. And I will see you very soon. With that, there's Lolly. <laughs> Bye.